Hello all, thanks for joining. In my last video in this series, I showed the recon speaker, de-rusting of the chassis, and associated painting. In addition, I placed the speaker assembly, variable tuning condenser, and choke on top of the chassis just to get a visual perspective. I also spent some time in cleaning those nasty IF cans and got those cleaned up as you can see and also did the spot removal of the rust underneath the chassis. Starting off the electrical restoration I worked on the B plus power supply. I also found that the B plus wiring that I documented was wrong. The choke was actually installed on the B minus side. This caused excessive AC ripple approximately 10%. So here are just a few photos, again, of the electrolytic capacitors that I used. And again, I had removed the inners of the existing electrolytic can and cut it open. And again, I'm just placing the two electrolytic capacitors that you see here back in the original uh, can. With the B-plus wiring behind me, I decided just to go ahead and tack solder some orange drop caps in after documenting the placement and values of all capacitors. That was important for restuffing of the mica mold caps, component, and lead dressing. I also checked all resistor values, replaced everything that was outside plus or minus 20% of their value. Next, I installed some temporary power resistors to drop the heater voltage down to the design based on 120 volt input line voltage. I tested, installed all the tubes including the tube shields, brought the radio up on the Variac slowly focusing on AC current. No issues were discovered at full power with the radio drawing 0.39 amps or 45.6 watts. However, no audio other than just some buzzing and distortion was present. I then checked all the tube voltages. They all seem to be within their design perimeters. So I used my audio generator, started working my way back from the plate of the 43 tube, which is the audio power amp. All was well there. So I ended up backing up to the second detector AVC tube, which is the 6B7. I had good audio at that point to pins four and five, which are the diode inputs and that is fed from the second IF. I then inserted an IF carrier at approximately 456 kilocycles at the plate of 6A7. That's the first detector oscillator. No signal was heard out of the loudspeaker at that point. I then double checked the primary and secondary windings of the second IF that I had checked previously and I had good resistance readings of around 14 to 16 ohms but it was obvious that the IF would not uh, resonate. So I tried adjusting again both the uh, primary and secondary uh, patterns for resonance and still had no response. With no response from the IF, I then removed the, uh, the actual troubled second IF can from the circuit, hooked up my signal generator, used my oscilloscope, looked at the response, that you see here and found regardless of the pattern adjustments or the variable capacitor adjustments, the filter would not resonate. I proceeded to remove the two pattern screws and the mica, cleaned everything really well with alcohol, reassembled, brought everything back up, bingo, the IF filter was now responsive. Here's a photo after. Next, I reinstalled the IF brought the radio back up slowly, again using the Variac, verified the AC current, wattage, and verified B plus voltages, and all was good. Things are looking up. I now had intermittent audio from the radio. I did find the volume control to be defective, which I ended up replacing. Electrically, the radio seems to be performing well. I do have some distortion from the five inch speaker that I reconed, and I think my recon was not quite right on the money. So things went south. I started pushing in on the center cone piece to do away with the vibration and the distortion that I was getting. 
and go figure it looks like the voice coil itself kind of gave away or cracked as you can see here in the photo so continuing on I did hook up a temporary 5 inch speaker not in the best condition did an audio alignment of both IFs and the oscillator radio is playing well I did notice that I installed the dial pointer wrong or it was that way in the beginning which I'll need to correct so what's next I'll pull the speaker out and see if I can make any repairs to the voice coil then I'll reevaluate my decision there on how to proceed in addition I still need to install the uh, 1N5408 3 amp diode that I talked about with the power resistors to get the heater string voltage in line with the design I typically install a CL90 it's an inrush current limiter as well and I'll probably throw in a fuse holder and fuse install the proper AC line cord. Uh, the tube shields still need to be de-rusted as well and a few other minor things before I start restuffing the mica mold capacitors. So before listening to this beautiful Chanticleer 2D570 play, stay tuned for the next video. I'll focus my attention again on trying to repair the voice coil. Not sure if I'll be successful or not. Then I'll try my hands at actually restuffing the old Michael Mole capacitors, which I've never done. Again, thanks for all my new subscribers out there as of late. I appreciate you taking time to subscribe and watch the videos. in the U.S.? Well, I think it already has. I think that debate and that conversation has begun. I think within Ferguson, it will lead to some changes, and maybe it already has. I think there's a greater desire to uh, put minorities in on the school board and in the city council, which both are, are almost universally white, uh, just like the police department. And the we will try that they really educate people to be teachers. Will you also be pressing for maybe less students studying at pedagogical faculties all around Slovakia? That's definitely a long-term plan. Says the current education minister, Juraj Draxler. Interestingly enough...